The way Abby's mouth quivered reminded her mother of the infant she used to be, when she was afraid and needing of consolation. Her innocent little face was frozen in a contorted pose as she let out an eerie, almost imperceptible wail. In this tutorial, we look at a better way to provide free lip syncing for your AI generated characters by supercharging an old AI lip sync technique called Wave to Lip with Stable Diffusion's new Media Pipe Face Mesh Control Net model. Before continuing, please make sure you're familiar with the techniques I covered in my previous tutorial titled Create Consistent Custom Control Net Character Animations with Laura that Cancel Flicker. You can click on the link being shown above to get there. Okay, let's look at the process. So first, you're going to want to get your dialogue for your character based on an existing script, maybe from one of your favorite movie scenes, or write original dialogue yourself, or you can also use ChatGPT. Next, create a voice track based on the dialogue you have. Now the voice track will drive this lip sync, so it's really important to spend a little extra time on it. You can record yourself, get an actor, or use something like Eleven Labs to do the acting for you. The way Abby's mouth quivered reminded her mother of the infant she used to be. Next step in the process, very important, is using a Laura model you find online or you make yourself. As we covered in the previous tutorial, this is an essential part of creating consistent animations with Stable Diffusion. Also, ensure you've spent some time working on your custom positive and negative prompts to really capture the right look for your character. And of course, the raw base animation that's going to work well in combination with the Laura model and your custom positive and negative prompt. Once you have these ingredients, you can create an animation using batch image to image. Again, if you're not familiar with how to do this, refer to my prior control net tutorial mentioned earlier. You can see that this animation is not yet lip synced. At this point in the process, we only want the head movements that you would expect to see when someone is talking and possibly eye blinks, eyebrow raises, and other facial motions, etc. Of course, all of this would have to be built into the original raw render from your CG model. The next step in the process is to prep this render with something like After Effects and DaVinci Resolve to reduce the flicker and clean up the green screen. This results in something that looks like this. The next step is to use Wave to Lip to add lip sync to the cleaned up Stable Diffusion render using the recorded dialogue that was created earlier. This collab for Wave to Lip, the link is in the description, is particularly easy to use and fast to set up. We step through the collab as usual and within minutes we have a rendered video that shows your custom character now with lip sync. The way Abby's mouth quivered reminded her mother of the infant she used to be. However, if we look a little closer here, we see there's a bit of a problem. First of all, it's pretty low res because unfortunately Wave to Lip only gives us outputs of 256 by 256. And while the lip sync is pretty spot on, there are some weird artifacts that look kind of messy. But fortunately, we have a way to fix that. Here in After Effects, we have a comp set up and we mask the lip synced video and place it over the original we fed into Wave to Lip. By masking out everything but the mouth and putting it over the top, we eliminate the messy areas around the mouth and other parts of the image. However, we still have the problem here of it being very low res. In order to remedy this, we're going to use Topaz Upscaler. So we create a comp that's about three times wider than our existing comp here. So that's going to be 768 by 256. We move the animation of the mask lip sync to the far left. Make sure that the frames per second are 12 and render it out as an uncompressed AVI. We then use something like Handbrake to compress it as an MP4 and bring this into Topaz and upscale by 400%. Bring the upscale result back into After Effects, crop to 1024 by 1024 and render a PNG sequence out. You can see here in this folder called Post, we have a PNG sequence of our animation that has now been upscaled and is properly showing the lip sync with minimal messy results around the mouth. Next, we bring these PNGs back into After Effects and make sure we haven't lost timing with the lip sync. Okay, before I show you the magic settings in Stable Diffusion, let's take a look at these images that are here on the screen. That shows you how much better the render looks after doing a second round of batch image to image in Stable Diffusion. The image on the left is a PNG from the sequence that was rendered from the up Topaz video that resulted in a 1024 by 1024 frame size. I fed this back into Stable Diffusion image to image to create the image shown on the right. Most striking is how this technique completely restores and essentially inpaints the blurry and distinctive mouth of the image you see here, rendering it into something detailed and high res that you see here. And of course, this is done to every image in the sequence because we're doing batch image to image. Here in Stable Diffusion, let's take a look at the settings that make this work. We start in the regular image to image tab first before we show batch so that I can demo what the generated output looks like in the web UI. While I do use the same model that was used in the first round of generation, as you can see, both the positive and negative prompts are empty. Here I place the first image from the Topaz post image sequence we showed earlier. Again, despite up with Topaz, the images from this sequence are still softer looking and the lip sync mouth region looks very messy and undefined. 
Here are the rest of the settings. We have a sampling method of Euler A. Sampling steps are five. Resize mode is just resize. Width and height are 1024 by 1024. CFG scale is five. And most interestingly, denoising strength is set to zero. We use a seed from the previous generation and ensure that restore faces is checked. Down in control net, I am using two control net tabs. I use the same image that I used above here in each of the control net tabs. In the first tab, it is enabled. The preprocessor is set to media pipe face. The model is media pipe face. The weight is maxed to two. The resize mode is just resize and all of the other settings are set to default. In the second control net tab, I have also enabled it. I set the preprocessor to canny. The model is set to canny. Weight is set to two. Resize mode is just resize and again, all other settings settings are set to default. We then scroll up to the top and click generate. We see the results in a moment and we can tell that the mouth area is much more well defined as is the rest of the face. Now in the batch tab, ensure that you have your input directory set to your first round generated images and your output directory set to an empty folder. We push generate and wait for the results. Just a quick test here in the output folder to make sure things are generating nicely and it looks like they are. I can just walk through here. I can see the mouth is formed nicely in each image. There's consistency in all the images as we would expect since denoising is set to zero and things are looking good. Okay, here we are back in After Effects and we can take a look at our second round images and check that the lip sync matches the vocal track. The way Abby's mouth quivered reminded her mother of the infant she used to be when she was afraid and needing of consolation. It sounds like it does, it looks good. And here is this animation used in the final render with the composited background, color correction, and effects. The way Abby's mouth quivered reminded her mother of the infant she used to be when she was afraid and needing of consolation. Her innocent little face was frozen in a contorted pose as she let out an eerie, almost imperceptible wail. At these moments, during the girl's trial, her body became still as the death riggers, and her irises resembled two softly illuminated crystalline fractals, blue and steady, receiving a dread transmission from some nether realm. However, a closer look would reveal what would appear to be a very fine, intricate weave of tiny, transparent wires, giving off a subtle blue iridescence that shifted like intelligent frost across a razor-thin, gel-like covering over both her eyes. That about covers it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell icon to be notified when the next tutorial comes out. If there's anything you'd like me to cover in more detail, let me know in the comments and I can include it in another tutorial. Thanks for watching and see you next time.